feel like I'm going to a disco in this thing. What are you doing? I'm going to go get some snow footage in these overwhites for gear tasting. Oh, snow? It's like 102 outside. Well, we got Final Cut. Didn't have some snow filters or something? Can't we do something? No, we can't do that. Why? Even Instagram has filters. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. I wanted to start off the episode today talking about some of our product line for a change. And what I wanted to do is kind of talk through the evolution of our zip bags and how we've kind of come to develop these products and where they stand today and where they're going in the future. So whenever we decided to make zip bags, first and foremost, the idea came from a bag like this, that's our red zip bag, it's our medical zip bag, that was purpose built to hold our Boo Kit Plus. So we kind of got a little bit large <laughs> in the tooth, if you will, about um, what we wanted to put into Boo Kit Plus. There's a lot of stuff that's jam packed in this kit, but we were like, well, we gotta have a pouch to hold it in. So that's where the zip bag design and shape and size came from. So I also took a look at a lot of zip bags on the market and I wanted to make sure that our products stood apart from other ones too. So what I wanted to do was come up with an easy way to open them because one of the, the pains I felt with zip bags, and I've owned quite a few of them too, is that you always wind up kind of grabbing it to open it. So my thought was, let's put some handles on it and that way you can grab the handle to, to help facilitate the opening and closing of the zip bag. So it makes it pretty easy to do. And I, I know I've probably talked about that on a past gear tasting, but I wanted to go through the whole evolution because we just came out with some new sizes too. So our medical zip bag kind of led us into different applications for them too. So that was our original size. And the, the premise too with these handles is that you could also use it to attach to a belt. So you can run your belt behind the handles too, and you could actually wear this on the small of your back or something like that if you needed to, or turn it into an 80s fanny pack, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so along the, that line came different colorway options. So now they come in that red that denotes the medical, comes with our med PVC patch on it, comes with some little red one wrap strips on the handles to help denote medical. And I'll explain why those are important here in a second. And then we came out with that in a coyote, a black, and even a multicam. So came out with those three colorways. Those have been pretty popular with everybody. So we decided to release some new sizes. A lot of people said, hey, can you make them smaller? Uh, I've got like small cables and pens and things like that to hold. So we came out with two new sizes. So still have the existing size. And now we've come out with our, what we're calling our skinny size here and our mini size here. So the skinny is more, as you can see, along the lines of like a pen size or a pencil or something like that. And then the mini is more for smaller items like cables and things of that nature. But, you know, we retain the same looped handles on the ends of the pouches so that you can still fit them through a belt if you needed to. Obviously, the belt for these would need to be a little smaller, um, whereas, you know, these can fit a pretty good sized belt. But, you know, same type of deal. You could, you know, put the little uh, mini pouch on the back of your belt and the small of your back and, you know, carry a little, uh, carry some of the items from the booba kit or some small trauma items, something like that, too, is a, just a suggestion. But that's kind of where we stand with this product line. But then we also have um, some variations in wax canvas, too, that we have that are the same size as the regular nylon zip bags, but these are wax canvas. So same premise, same principle. Um, both, uh, all these sizes have loop on them, too. As you'll see on the skinny and mini, we don't have loop on the front of those, but the larger sizes we do. So we just came out with this new navy, I call it the vintage navy colorway uh, in that color for the zip bag. And then we've got our standard surplus green and midnight black colorways in the other colors of the wax canvas. So the reason that we, the other reason we made those handles, and you know, I talked a little bit about the one wrap on the handle, is that on our discrete messenger bag, which we do have these coming, be patient. I know a lot of people are asking for these. They've been out of stock for a while. It's just a very elaborate bag and hard to make. And we promise you they're coming. It's just tough to get it made in the U.S. and all that stuff, which we're doing still. So anyway, the interior pockets on the flap of the messenger bag here have these snaps. So they're expandable pockets. And that is what those 
handles are for is as you insert this in here and you snap the pockets back, you've got this handle that sticks up and it makes it easy to cut away the pocket and pull out what you need in these pockets. And all four of the pockets on the, si the sides and the front are all the same size so you could have four different zip bags. So it's a great way to kind of dock in and out different things that you might have. So you can store certain things in one zip bag and not the other. You can, you know, have color coded bags um, and that's what the red one wrap is for too, is that one wrap sticks out of the, the top of that so you know right where your medical components are if you ran them in a bag like this. So easy to get to, super easy to pull out and access. So that's the premise behind the zip bags and kind of the evolution thus far with them. We've got plenty more planned. I won't spoil too much, but um, there are some different things that are coming out in nylon very soon. So promise you'll hear about them here on Gear Tasting. All right, let's get into a few questions over coffee. Drinking some more, got your six coffee. This is the Zero Dark 30 blend. Pretty good. So the first question is, I don't know, it seems a little awkward to answer, uh, given that it's like 102 outside here in Texas. But the question is, listening to the Gear Tasting Radio episode on the basics of camo, any suggestions or advice on winter camo or overwhites? Yeah, it just feels dirty. I can't, I don't know. Wrong time of the year, but I, I will field the question. So in Texas, as you know, we get like one round of snow that's maybe a day, maybe two days, maybe three days. Maybe it's just ice. We don't really get too much here. So in terms of how much camouflage I have, the amount of white that I have for snow is very low. I'm talking like this is it right here. Out of all that rack of clothing back there, this is my attempt at an over white and I, that's all I have. So basically I picked up these, I think I got them on eBay a while back because they were a good deal and they almost look bluish. I don't know if you can tell but they call them over whites and this is the Arteryx Wraith I think is what this stuff is. So it's pants and a jacket but uh, and the jacket does have a hood so that's a, a bonus. And, you know, they're supposed to be very lightweight, so you can slip them over your existing clothing, um, that type of deal. You know, the, the waistband is just a big piece of shock cord, so you can, you're supposed to slip it over your existing clothing. But, you know, my, my deal with overwhites like this are that when the material is almost translucent like this, you, you really will get a, a lot of color still through it from your existing camouflage or whatever you're wearing on, on the, you know, inside of that. So I'm not really sure how effective this stuff is. And like I said, I picked this up a while back and it hasn't snowed since I bought it. So I really haven't had the opportunity uh, to try this out because I've only had it maybe a year and a half now or something like that. And we didn't get snow this last season here in Texas. So I really haven't had a chance to see how well it works. And I was kind of interested in the bluish hue to see whether it would stand out or not. Uh, but you know, a kind of a premise from a camouflage standpoint is there's a lot of there's a couple of different schools of thought that you you should wear you know over whites on the bottom so that it blends in with the snow you're standing in but then you wear kind of a traditional camouflage top so you still blend in with the foliage that's around you uh, there's you know consenting to opinions when it comes to that so you know more or less um, I would definitely get comfortable with snowshoes if you're in that kind of environment that's probably one of the fastest ways to move through that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I'm sure you're probably experienced with that if you've been around any kind of snow and you're walking through it. It gets to be pretty tedious and um, it, can be, it can be strenuous to walk through snow over a long period of time. So I'd highly recommend some snowshoes. I think MSR makes some. That, those are the ones I have. Like I said, I've hardly ever used cold weather stuff here, but I have some. So I probably use them like two times total. Um, and, you know, I haven't been around huge snow drifts. So can't really comment too much about that. I do own a snow shovel though, which I have not used. And there's a probe in there for detecting, you know, avalanche and probing for someone that might get trapped under there, but kind of getting off topic. Anyway, so yeah, this is the, the Wraith stuff that Arteryx makes. I don't think they make this anymore. 
Um, I would look towards Velocity Systems. They make some really good overwhite stuff that I've seen, and if I were to buy some nowadays, uh, if I found myself needing that, I would go to Velocity Systems and buy their stuff because I think they've got like an overglove, they've got a top, they've got bottoms. I almost want to say they might have a balaclava or some kind of head covering. I'm not sure, but anyway, hopefully that at least gets you a little further along in your, your quest to find some knowledge about overwhites. Okay, next question comes from Matt V over email, and this literally just came in today, but I love the question so much I wanted to go ahead and answer it today because I started getting interested in it. Rob printed out this gear list thing, and anyway, the question is, so I just saw an episode of Alone on the History Channel, and the contestants are only allowed to allow 10 items from a list, and I was curious which items you would pick. The following is the link. So he linked us to this Alone gear list, and we got it printed out. So I started trying to find out a little bit about the show. I've never watched it. Rob's never watched it. So we had to kind of look at what the premise is behind it. So the way we see it, and correct us if we're wrong, but it sounds like you're split up from a partner or family or IE, whoever you're competing with. And the goal in the first part is to link up with that person and then you continue on and just survive basically in the elements and it's kind of a last man standing type thing. So um, that's the premise I'm going on with this information. But So in looking through this, you've got a pretty extensive list of stuff that you already have on you, not counting the things you have the choice to pick from. And it sounds like these 10 items are per team. So this isn't a personal thing. This is like, hey, you get 10 items per team. The only problem with that is that you've got to technically survive until you link up with your partner. So these things would be split up for a time before you guys link up. So what I'd like to do is more, more handle this as though I have five items to take and that's what I picked through. So here's, the, here's just the personal effects and clothing of what you get. So it's, it's quite a lot. A pair of high leg hunting boots, a pair of water shoes, because Crocs are important when you're surviving, one t-shirt, two fleece or wool shirts, I'm glad they said wool, not taking fleece, they can keep their fleece, uh, wool shirts, hooded or unhooded, one wool sweater, three pairs wool socks, two hats, brimmed wool or baseball, one bandana or shemog, or a buff face mask. I don't know what a buff face mask is, like, yeah, anyway. Uh, two pairs of gloves, one insulated and one leather work style glove, two pairs of underwear, one warm outdoor jacket, one rain jacket, one rain pant, one pair of thermal underwear, long bottom and top, one pair of gaiters, one leather belt or synthetic equivalent, one toothbrush, one pair of eyeglasses with proof of prescription, so meaning you can't use the glasses as a fire starter if you're not prescribed them. Uh, one personal photograph, one multi-season sleeping bag, it should be a minimum of negative 10 degrees Celsius rating and synthetic. One fixed blade knife, one ferro rod must not be longer than six inches. That's what she said. And must have a plastic handle. All right, so from this list of what you can take other than that, you get, like I said, each team may select 10 items. Participants may only choose up to two food items each. So out of the five I'm going to take, I'm allowed two food items if I want them. Uh, Non-hunting items are limited to one of each item listed per teammate. The hunting items are limited to one each item per team. So if it's a hunting item, you get one. If it's a non-hunting item, you get one. Hun this is really confusing because it sounds to me like I get two food items and one hunting, non-hunting item and one hunting item, but yet we can take 10 items total or five apiece. It really doesn't make sense. I'm just going to go on the whole five thing, and if I'm wrong, sue me, right? Okay, so these are the categories. You got shelter, bedding, cooking, hygiene, hunting, food, and tools. And then this little thing under here says navigational aid, and it says this will be provided by a producer to the hiker and will be removed once a team is reunited. So, and it says compass and compass bearing. So I'm thinking without seeing the show that you've got a compass and a bearing and that's where your teammate is. You guys are basically working on a reciprocal bearing, so one guy gets a bearing, the other guy gets the recip, and you're just kind of meeting in the middle along a, a bearing, and you gotta at least be able to handle a compass for that long and just walk a bearing. That's pretty simple to do with a compass, so I'm kind of thinking that's probably what happens in the show. Correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, in the comments, but, um, and then it says it's taken up, you know, once they're reunited. So, first of all, I'm gonna focus on food, because I feel like, if I'm going to be alone in the wilderness, there's, you know, the, the whole rule of threes applies, right? So 
you can go you know three minutes without air three days without uh, three hours without shelter three days without food and or sorry three days three hours without let me start again <laughs> there's too many threes three minutes without air three hours without shelter three days without water and three weeks without food there we go sorry all right so even though there's no water listed on here. I'm thinking you have to collect your own water. That's the premise I'm going on because they haven't mentioned it anywhere. I'm, maybe they have water stations, who knows. But they didn't put any type of water purification options on here to take. So I'm willing to bet they're either providing water or it's just a natural stream and they're not worried about bacteria and protozoa and all that stuff, who knows. But anyway, um, I think I would probably start off let me, let me just read through this first because there's a couple of, there's not too many items on here. So shelter is a 12 by 12 ground cloth or tarp. Grommets approved. Grommets approved. Eight millimeter climbing rope, 10 meters, 550 parachord. That's C-H-O-R-D, parachord. Uh, 20 meters, one hatchet, one saw, one ax. So those are the shelter options. Bedding, you can either take a bivy bag, which is a Gore-Tex sleeping bag cover, uh, or a sleeping pad or a hammock. Cooking, you've got a large pot, no more than two quarts, includes lid. One steel frying pan, one enamel bowl for eating, one spoon, one canteen or water bottle. And then hygiene is a bar of soap, some toothpaste, a face flannel, I don't know what that is. A uh, 40 millimeter roll of dental floss, a small bottle bio shower soap, one shaving razor, gotta shave out in the wilderness, you know. That. Who would take that as their item? Come on, give me a break. Shave razor. One towel, 30 by 60, a comb, because this is stand by me, you gotta make sure your hair is nice and straight when the cameras are rolling, right? Hunting, note only one item can be chosen between each pair of participants. A 300 yard roll of single filament fishing line, 25 assorted hooks, no lures. One primitive bow, six arrows, must be predominantly made of wood. I would think that they'd be giving us it anyway. One small gauge net, 12 by 14 with one and a half inch mesh. One slingshot catapult, 30 steel ball bearings and one replacement band. One net foraging bag, one 3.5 roll of trapping wire and three pounds of one solid block of salt. You know, so if you wanna just put out a salt lick and wait to strangle a deer when they come by, right? Uh, food, two pounds of beef jerky, two pounds of pulses, legumes, lentils, mix, two pounds of biltong, two pounds hardtack military biscuits, two pounds chocolate, two pounds pemmican, two pounds gorp, two pounds flour, one third pound rice, one third pound sugar, one third pound salt. That's all one item. Tools, a pocket knife, a leatherman, multi-tool is similar, one sharpening stone, one roll of duct tape or electrical tape, one small shovel, one small sewing kit, one carabiner, one LED flashlight, one pair of ice spikes. Sorry, that was a little longer than I thought. So here's what I would take. I would take a bivy bag. So if I'm gonna be out in the wilderness with a sleeping bag, I want a bivy sack. If it rains on me, I want something. And I'm not just gonna take a tarp and then hope I can rig it up because I feel like a tarp is almost useless without parachord and then you have to take parachord too as your secondary item and then you got two things that anyway I just take a bivy sack right and then I would take a canteen or water bottle because technically you could still boil water in an algae and there's ways to do it is it the safest thing to do no you could potentially risk ruining your algae and not having anything to drink out of but it is possible if you're familiar with how to do that um, and then I would take an LED flashlight and I would take two pounds of pemmican and two pounds of gorp. So that's my list. Those are my five things that I would take starting off. Now, I might change that up a little if I see that the event is pretty quick in terms of how fast you're united with the other person because it is about surviving too. So that's the premise of the show. I just feel like if I'm on the move, I'm going to want a flashlight to see at night. I'm not gonna wanna deal with boiling water and cooking if I don't have to. So, I mean, who knows? That could be a, something we have to do anyway. I really wanna know more about the water situation before I made that determination because I might opt for a pot to cook in. The problem with that though, is if you're boiling water as your only method of you know, decontaminating water, you have to wait for the water to cool too. So you boil water, you have to wait for it to cool down before you can drink it. So. I don't know, it's a long process. And that's why I wouldn't necessarily bring a bunch of stuff to worry about trying to hunt with. I mean, yes, there's some inherent like survivability type stuff that's gotta happen, but really 
you could always take you know this massive clothing list and start breaking stuff down and creating your own cordage out of some of these extra shirts and things like that too so there's there's ways that you could work around this list without having to necessarily eat up the items that you could take here so I want to be able to move at night if I had to so I want a flashlight um, I want to be able to move without having to stop and cook so that's why I'm taking stuff like gorp and pemmican. So pemmican is like a natural source of fat and protein. That's your fat and your protein. Um, and then the gorp is kind of like a carb base. It's got raisins and M&Ms and peanuts. There's some carb in there too. So I feel like that's a pretty good mix. That's stuff that you can eat while you're on the go. You don't have to stop and fix it. It's just a, it's, it's a good choice in my mind because I want, I want to stay fueled. I want to stay uh, hydrated, those are big things, so that's what it would allow me to do. And then if I needed to stop and sleep, I certainly don't want to worry about creepy crawlies. I'm nervous about that. I don't like creepy crawlies when I sleep, so if I can protect myself, I want to. And that's my list. So hopefully that answered your question. I know it was a little long-winded, but I thought it was interesting. I think it's kind of cool to look through stuff and talk through why I would pick certain things. You know, I'd be worried about my fixed blade dulling, but honestly, that's less of a concern probably for an event like this that may be, I don't know, two weeks maybe at the most. Who knows? Um, but it does say that they're on Vancouver Island. So up in Alaska, there's a lot of greenery. There's a lot of ways to uh, gather uh, things to live off the land too, up there too. So tons of salmon if you can catch a fish. All right, I know I'm like two for two with my geometry lately. I know that Vancouver is in Canada. I know it's not in Alaska. Sorry, I messed that up. Forgive me. All right. Hey guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. If you like what we're doing here on the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Link is below. We've got some big goals that we want to do with the channel and your support would mean a lot to us. Um, drinking Got Your Six Coffee again today. Somebody asked in the comments the other day if this is a paid sponsorship for coffee. No, it's not. I just actually enjoy... Uh, got your six coffee and I'm drinking and I want to show some support on the show. So little shout out to them on their coffee. So drink it right now. Thanks for watching.